It's really, it's just a really interesting question because I almost don't think it's even a question living regionally and working internationally, which is, you know, like we, we're so fortunate to have things like the cloud. We're so fortunate to have so many things that you can tap into to working wherever you need to work. If, you, if you're in a situation where you can do it and can make that choice and make that live where you need to live, it's, it's, it's amazing. So there's, not everybody has, but if you have got the chance to do it, it's, it's, it's incredible. I've got a couple of things that are tools to do that, but I was just really interested of our group, is how, what sort of percentage of people that's, that have chosen to move here and live here and work here, or who, how, what sort of percentage of people that grew up here and kind of are trying to find a way to sort of tap into the city and, and do that sort of thing? People that chose to come here and live here and work here? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, isn't it? As opposed to people that grew up here and are sort of trying to... Yeah, amazing. It's amazing. Wow, aren't we lucky? Um, yeah, 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 us. Um, so, really, I think a lot of it is, is business practices, and which you would have anywhere in the world that you worked, in the cities, in the big companies, in the corporates, whatever thing. But I think just because we aren't face-to-face -face all the time, it's just remembering to kind of you know, do that just even that little step more, you know, there's a couple of things about that. My, my slide, my only slide, really, was that. It's a plane. <laughs> Get on it a lot. I mean, it just is, isn't it, you know? Like, yeah. we have to, we, just, we don't need that, there you go. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's travel, it's relationships, it's your network. If you haven't had the chance where you've been in the city or been, had a chance to do that, go down there and do it. You don't have to live down there to do it, go there and do it. For all of us who've had all that experience and that, that time doing that, and we've got that experience, then you just have to keep that alive, you know? And like Dana was saying, you know, you're the, working on things like Big Brother and experiences like that that you have, you gather, that just keep expanding, don't they? My corker is that, you know, I started it in Cannes in, at MIP TV 19 years ago, and a number of the people that I jumped on the piano and danced with at four o'clock in the morning and now heads of Fox International channels and all sorts, you know? Like, you're all friends and you just... That just keeps... That's your network of people that, you know, it's, it's just business sense, isn't it? It's just, well, dancing on the piano at four o'clock in the morning isn't good business sense, but <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so, I guess I guess just my, my personal case study is that as... as um, I think Lois introduced me yesterday, is that I worked for Southern Star for, for years um, in the early days and I was the head of international sales. So I worked internationally from really very early on in my career and travelled probably 85% of the year for nine years. So I was never in Australia. I just lived on the road. If I came back, my girlfriends would come and have a cup of tea or a wine and blow dry my undies while I packed my bag again. <laughs> so it was kind of... It was insane, you know, but that... that for, for my personal career meant that my whole my whole base of relationships was all international broadcasters. So for me, I was very, very fortunate that it, it didn't matter where in the world I was because I was on I was already on email, I was already doing that, and that's just the way that I worked. Um, it's hilarious now when I have an, and I have a phone call and the cows are outside mooing and I'm on the phone to Channel Seven and they're like, "What is that noise?" <laughs> Two o'clock, the cows are at the top of the paddock. <laughs> it's hilarious. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, for us, it was a lifestyle change. It was, it was we've got small kids, da 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 And, you know, I had, uh, when I had my team at Verve in its sort of heyday, I had 15 staff also in an, an office at Fox Studios. And, and they, you know, they all worked from home. We all had, you know, we had a server that enabled us to, uh, enabled us to do that. I also employed agents all around the world, so I had agents in Italy, agents in Scandinavia, you know, it, it's just it's just your network, you're just continuing that network, so it's really, um, it's really just the business practice thing, and I think a couple of things about the tools that, that I found really, really useful all through my career, which actually came from Robin Watts, who was the CEO of Southern, uh, Southern Star in the very, very early days, Who's remember, who remembers Robin? <laughs> formidable woman, she is amazing. And she used to say to us that every email you get, you respond to by the end of the day. Every meeting you ever have, you respond to them within 24 hours. 
just even if it's not the full response, just to thank them for their time, you, you, you're right in there. And that's just good business practice of successful people anyway, if that's the way they choose to do it. But I think when you're working regionally and you're not in the ability to be face to face all the time, those sorts of tiny little things just make such, they're just important. You know, the other thing that Robin actually had us all do in the early days was a resubmit system. I mean, this is really just basic dumb work practices, but they're not dumb. But, you know, and a resubmit system is so much easier to do now with your emails because you can tag everything and, you, can, you know, everyone's obviously got their systems of how they remind themselves to do it. Back in the day before that was all a able to do it, you know, we had a folder and we had one t tabs 1 to 30 and all of our follow-up for everything we were selling, we would, res we would do it, we would have to write resubmit dates on it, put it in, boom. So every day you'd come in, you'd do your resubmits. You know, I mean, that's a really good advice, you know. It's just, it just means you don't forget stuff. You don't want to, you need to follow up when you're not there face to face, but it doesn't mean you need to be a pain in the neck, so do it properly. Um, I think the other thing about when you're not, not in the city or not in a situation where, you, where it's really easy to have the meetings. And in fact, I like it much more not doing that. I've got a lot of, a lot of producers that I work with and a lot of the broadcasters as well, that if I go down to Sydney and have intense four day sessions of meetings, they don't want to talk about anything to do with what thing I'm pitching. They want to know about the cows in the paddock and they want to know everything that's going on up here. And then they're like, just send me an email about everything else. You know, like, so they don't actually want to have the meetings anyway. And, and you know, I remember in the days, like the, the time wasted on meetings, Christ. It's like, just summarise it in a meeting, any, in an email anyway. And that's, I think, the, the advantage, the huge, adva huge advantage if you're able to push your time that way and work independently and regionally or remotely, I think, is the word. And I think that's the thing too, regionally, remotely, for me, I always felt that being in Australia was being regional and working international. <laughs> you know, it's not actually Byron, it's not the Blue Mountains, it's we're in Australia, we're miles away from everything. And, you know, and the time zone thing is an awesome thing to consider, um, which I think, most of my career, I've actually used that to my advantage because you can buy time really well with that, <laughs> you know. But And I kind of pretty well made my whole reputation on being the jet-lagged Aussie in Cannes. Like, you know, oh, oh, there's Vic again, you know. She's always late, she's oh, well, whatever. But she's jet-lagged, you know, we'll let her go. <laughs> but, you know, it's it, people love Australians and they love Australia and they love to hear from Australians. They love to come here. If you, there's anything, anything that you can generate that there's work for them to be here, they want to be here. You know, we've got a real advantage as Australians and we've got a huge advantage as By in Byron. I think someone mentioned it yesterday, didn't they, about um, invite them here. You know, and I've done that a couple of times if we've had to have meetings. I mean, what, it's $90 each way on a flight. I bring them up here, have lunch and we, with our other business, which is I'm juggling, is we have a guest house that sleeps 24 people, which is completely bonkers that blew out of the proportion this morning. But, you know, I, I accommodate them. They have a beautiful time. They can put their crews up here. It's amazing, you know. It's like, they're like, Ripper, I'd much rather do that. I know Kate McQuillan does that as well and actually yeah. invites people up to Whipparee to her farm out there where she does do it girl work. And they just love it. They, they absolutely love it. love it. Yeah, they love it. It gives them a chance to have a bit of an off-site, you know. It's, it's great. The other big tool, um, who's aware of MIP TV? Okay, who's ever been to MIP TV? Okay, go, 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 go. That is the one thing I think that, so MIP TV is the, MIP and MIPCOM are the two markets in Cannes in France. So they're either side of the film festival. They're not a festival as per, like, like the film festival is. It's much more of a trade show. It's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people all set up on stands. All the broadcasters are there, all the distributors are there, all the producers are there, everyone's there. It's where stuff happens. And there's so many tiers of what happens in Cannes. There's like the big wigs doing mergers of channels and companies. There's da da da. Then there's us flotting around on the bunker floor. The bunker's the bottom floor that's just a warren of stuff. Meetings are on the half hour every half an hour for five days. So you can actually go there and meet like, I don't know, 90 odd people. But a lot of the stuff that happens in Cannes isn't actually the meetings that you schedule, it's who you meet when you're going up an escalator or waiting in line for a sandwich or dancing on the piano at the Martinez or it's where relationships are made and 
there's grants. Screen Australia has grants for people to go, first producers or emerging producers. But it's just an awesome, awesome opportunity to just go and get a sense of what else is happening in the market, what trends are, um, how much other s product and content there is, and you just make connections. It's just about making connections. And the other thing is that the minute that you register f for MIP, you get the book. This book is like a big weight of gold because it has every single broadcaster with their email address <laughs> and their phone number all around the world. So, you know, even that, just booking the flights and booking to register just to get that book is, I reckon, worth it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else have I got here? It is tax deductible. It is yeah. tax deductible, isn't it? Definitely. It is. But Screen Australia do offer grants, don't they, to go and... I don't know if they do. Oh, okay. Did everyone hear that? That's interesting. They, they have got a new system where they pay half and you pay half. But, you know, I mean, it's, you can get flights pretty reasonably to go. The accommodation, you just share in with a few people and, you know, it's, it's really, really doable. And if anybody wants to go and needs some tips about how to get there or how to manage it, because it's pretty daunting. You know, if you've actually got a project and you do want to make meetings, you do set your meetings up before you go. But there's also a hell of a lot of opportunity of what you can do when you're there. And they also have an am amazing sessions and, you know. Okay, I will just pop in for a minute on the tax deductibility mm. thing because, um, I mean, that's exactly right. You know, keep all those receipts. And as well, if you're there with a particular project, then it will become, if you get that project lit, um, a development expenditure for that project and there will be an element of it that will be offset claimable, not both ways, mm. but uh, one way of your ticket. So there's many reasons mm. to, you know, that you can actually discount the cost of it down the track. Yeah. And you get to claim all your VAT back as well when you're there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and also with Screen Australia, they do have the Australians at MIPCOM stand. So you can go under their umbrella and you can have meetings on their stand. You've got a base. They have cocktail parties, in, you know, on the Tuesday afternoon. And you get to meet... If it's too dawn, you can go out there and meet all sorts. You've got a real base there that's nurturing and it's a, it's a really good feeling. So I really, really, really recommend having a look into that. Um, the two markets are quite similar. Metcom sometimes a little bit bigger. They're the same sort of things anyway. Um, the other thing that I really recommend when you're travelling is just... When, when you are travelling, anywhere you're travelling, just really, really, really look at the television guides. <laughs> just study it. Just, just get... Or just look online, you know, start to, start to think again, you know, what, what is popular in Switzerland? What is popular in England? What is popular in wherever, you know? Because it's, it's about trends as well. So that, that we'll do that later on in the session this afternoon.